hello my loves and welcome back to my channel it is the exact same day i've just taken my hair down we love pre-recording but listen i have some goals i want to accomplish those goals and my word of 2024 is foresight so here we are doing some pre-filming this is part three of my best of 2023 books this is the final part where i'm telling you my favorite books that were published in 2023 when i tell you that i've read about 40 plus new releases in this year as i'm recording it but of course as you're watching this it's already 2024 but i read a ton of 2023 releases and while you'll see some overlap with my best of 2023 list this is exclusively a list of the books that were published in 2023 that I really enjoyed so without further ado let's jump on it this is in no particular order so we're just gonna count down I have Bloom by Delilah S. Dawson you all know that I put this on my most anticipated releases for the second half of the year and I'm happy to tell you it did not disappoint Bloom is a sapphic horror and and it follows this woman named Ro who goes to a farmer's market. And while she's at the farmer's market, she meets this woman named Ash, who she thinks is the most beautiful woman she has ever seen. And she is just immediately very much intrigued. The thing is, Ash has some huge fucking red flags real red flags and Ro she's willing to ignore it. Anyway what I really love about this story is how much it was full of dread. The author manages to do this thing where you're reading the book and you're afraid but you don't know why you're afraid. Nothing particularly scary has happened. You are just scared. You're full of dread. But she also brings in Rose feelings where you have like this fluttering in your belly and you're like, oh my gosh, how cute. She's so in love with Ash, but also what the fuck is gonna happen? And that's what the entire story is about. I did end up giving this four stars because while I knew exactly what was going on, there were certainly some scenes in here where I was like, Ew. And this is just such a mastery of dread and like evoking emotions in readers that I would definitely recommend. Then I have another sapphic romance. This is on the same page, which I picked up on a whim from Kindle Unlimited. It just happened to be recommended to me and I was like, okay, cool. I love sapphic romance. This is a friends to lovers. I love this book so much and you're going to hear more about it in my December wrap up. So I'll try not to overwhelm your senses here but in this book we are following two best friends who have been best friends for a long time and one of the friends is experiencing this kind of love drought she wants her true love but she's really not having any luck in that field so she confides in her best friend her best friend has a christmas party and there's this huge misunderstanding because she gets a gift from her best friend and she's like what the fuck is this and it leads her to interpret that her best friend wants to fuck her so they do. <laughs> they have sex and eventually they do fall in love. I love the friends to lover trope. Make it sapphic and I'm gonna love it even more. Yes, this book is a smidge too long, but the friends to loverness of it is just so cute. And also it's very steamy. Like not overwhelmingly steamy, but the whole premise is that they decide to be friends with benefits. And I have Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. I also read Part of Your World this year, but Part of Your World is not a 2023 release. So we're here to talk about Yours Truly. Yours Truly follows two doctors, Brianna and Jacob. Brianna is a doctor who is having a very difficult time in life right now. Her brother has kidney failure and she is trying very much to help him because he is also struggling with his mental health. And she just divorce her cheating husband she really wants to have this position that was opened up and she thinks she's a shoe in except that they bring on a male doctor named jacob and these two immediately have beef they get off on the wrong foot but Jacob just has a lot of social anxiety and he doesn't understand why Brianna doesn't like him. So he writes her a letter and just apologizes for anything that he may have done to lead her to construe his feelings as contempt. And they start exchanging letters, they become friends. And the thing is, Jacob's brother is marrying his ex-girlfriend and his family is very much concerned about this. So he gets Brianna to like fake date him, not gets her. She hears about this and is like, I want to fake date you to help get you through the situation so they start fake dating and as it goes fake dating leads to real feeling they of course fall in love and what i just loved about this was the exploration of anxiety for our main male character as well as all of the conversations
conversations about the difficult and heavy emotions that our two characters are experiencing. The character development of this was really well done. I really enjoyed the writing and the pacing of this but the ending really let this book down. While I did give this book pretty close to five stars, I will not deny that the ending is very much chaotic. In some ways it makes sense, but it does utilize a trope that a lot of people dislike. And I won't tell you what that trope is for the sake of spoilers, but you can look it up and you can make your own determination as to whether or not you want to read this. I've already spoken about these books in my best of 2023 list so I won't do it super intensively here. We have The Adventures of Amina al-Sarafi which is a pirate adventure story full of magic, mischief, strong character development, romantic undertones, and just general action adventure. A classic pirate story with a badass female main character which I adore. And we have Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies, a true masterpiece of fairies a lore uh, as well as having strong romantic elements of it, strong found family elements and it's a fairy tale with dark undertones that is perfect for those of us who enjoy stories of fae but want our fae to have a little bit more bite and darkness as they often do in fae lore. Hellbent by Leigh Bardigo is the sequel to Ninth House as I've already mentioned. If you know me and you know my love of certain type of romances you know exactly why I enjoyed Hellbent. All definitely does have its criticisms in terms of the seeming lack of plot throughout this. Sometimes I'm just here for the vibes and the vibes in this one was strong. I particularly enjoyed the introduction of some other mythical creatures and the further development of the main core characters in this series, particularly Alex who I think is such a badass with such a tragic backstory and I love seeing her development and her progression throughout this. Finally a very controversial pick because this ends up both on people's best of the year list but also people's worst of the year list. This is The Writing Retreat by Julia Bartz and I stand by what I said. It is NaNoWriMo but make it murder. In this book we're following a woman who has a falling out with her best friend. There were definitely strong sapphic undertones in that relationship and she's devastated by this loss and she's keeping a secret. They both share this love of a feminist horror novelist named Rosa and Rosa hosts a writing retreat. She ends up getting the spot on the writing retreat but what she does not know is that her best friend, her former best friend, also got a spot on this writing retreat. The thing is not all is as it seems. They have a month to write the first draft of a novel and whoever has the best novel according to Rosa will get a six-figure publishing deal. But Rosa is unhinged, absolutely unhinged and the these characters are in more danger than they think they are. The isolated wintry setting of this book was already going to work for me. The fact that it is very queer and very sapphic was already going to work for me. And as I said before, the premise of this book is be gay, do crime. The girlies who gotta get it. And I got it. I understood it. Does this mean that it was perfect? No. There's a reason why it's not on my best books of 2023 list, but it was still a lot of fun and it's still something that I would recommend. Just go in with the right mindset. I want to say something here that's going to sound a little bit odd. I knew exactly what was happening from like the moment when we entered Rose's house. It made me laugh because this is the exact thing that people who play The Sims do. <laughs> where you just take some people off the street and you force them to paint while you lock them in your basement. I will have put a spoiler warning on there. But just know, the fact that it reminded me of that is not the author's fault, but I could not help but laugh because I was like, the fact that I saw that coming because it is the most basic thing that simmers do when they play The Sims, just cracked me up. But besties, those were the seven best books that I read that were published in 2023. I didn't want to have too much overlap with my best books of 2023 list, but just know that I read a shit ton of 2023 releases and many of them were quite mediocre. So here's to hoping for a better reading year in 2024. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna go now because my sinuses, they are struggling right now. So subscribe if you would like to. I would love to have you stick around for all of the fun videos that I have coming up this year and I shall see you in the next one. Bye! <laughs>